This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm undertaking a series of videos on how to bind off ribbing. This first bind off is the Smiles and Frowns bind off. It's my very favorite needle bind off. And I think, um, I think that everyone can learn this and it's an extremely useful stitch. My next bind off is a double back stitch bind off. It's a little firmer bind off than many, kind of a very interesting decorative edge. It looks like pearls along the edge. My next bind off I call the pearl graft bind off. It goes on kind of like Kitchener stitch. Very stretchy, very professional looking with a little bit of a pearl stitch again along the edge. This next bind off was done with a crochet hook and it's a way to bind off after you're off the machine and get the same look as a loop through a loop bind off. And this last bind off is a whip stitch bind off and it simply involves getting two whip stitches into every single knit stitch on either side of the one by one ribbing. So those are the different ways that you can bind off after the fact with ribbing and I'm going to have a few little videos showing how to do these. Sometimes you make a project out of ribbing and the question arises how best to do the bind off. This is a sample of ribbing, Knit One Pearl One, and I have put circular rows of waist yarn here at the top to make it easy to sew and bind off. This is an unusual needle bind off that I'm doing today. I'll start by threading the yarn into a tapestry needle and I'm going to fold down the waist yarn. I have just brought the yarn up in between next to the beginning stitch and you have to stop a moment with most of these needle bind offs and figure out what's the stitch on the edge and in this case it's this one and on the inside you can see it, it is in this case this stitch right here. The way this needle bind off works is you take a back stitch through, through two of the stitches on this side, then a back stitch through two of the stitches on the opposite side, and you proceed across in that fashion. It makes a very interesting firm bind off. So I'm going to take that first back stitch by skipping ahead one stitch, and then backing up and going through the first stitch. Then I switch to the other side and skip ahead to the second stitch. I'm going to draw this up, and then I go in the first stitch on the side opposite me, and then go in a new stitch. Now whenever there is a piece of yarn and you're wondering whether to go under or over it, go over it. So I want to go take the back stitch on my side, so I'm going to go in here, go across to the next new stitch that I have not previously gone in, and that'll be the back stitch on my side. Now I go over to your side, go in the previous stitch, here it is, put my needle on top of all the strands of yarn and go into a new stitch on this side. Then I back up to the previous stitch on this side, go across and go in a new stitch on the opposite side, and back up a little hard to see the previous stitch. Back up and go in the previous stitch. Go across to a new stitch. Back up and go in the previous stitch. Go across to a new stitch. Previous, new. Previous and new. previous, new. After a minute or two this really goes quickly. So this is my back stitch and then I'm moving forward to the next stitch on your side of the street. Then I'm going to get my next 
hook into the previous stitch on that side. That takes the back stitch over there and go to a new stitch on my side of the street. Previous, new. If it gets a little hard to see one, just spread things a little. It's got a herringbone look to it. It's a very interesting looking bind off. And I could see doing this on the edge of a blanket or the edge of a collar. Some place where you want a really professional looking finish. And to finish this off, what you would do is bring the yarn through this edge you can hide it later and then unravel the waist yarn I do 8 rounds of waist yarn which means I actually knit 16 rows if I were to only go 8 rows of waist yarn then I would find myself with a problem might not be enough and it might give me a raveling problem. Now look how interesting that looks. It's got kind of a double thickness look here and from here it, it's got kind of an interesting like a pearl edge to it. So I'm going to call it the double back stitch bind off since I really don't know what else to call the thing but isn't that interesting?